Okay, 27. Here we go. I thought it was 26. Oh, no, yeah. Let me take 26. Okay, let me hear what you have to say. What are the multiples of 8? 2, 4. I've got answers. Two, four, Hands up. Yes, Kiara? 1, 2, 4, 8. Anyone else? Yes. Nice. Okay. Good job. All right. So Avery is kind of, so don't feel bad. Avery is kind of a freak of nature because most people make the, the mistake in a good way. She remembers that the factors and multiples are different. Okay. So factors are what go into a number. Multiples are what a number goes into. Does that make sense? Yes. So 1, 2, 4, and 8 all go into 8, but 8, 16, 24, 32 are what 8 goes into. Is that, so that's a big difference. Yes. So like multiples, it sound, kind of sounds like multiplies. So yeah. It's kind of like what you multiply to get, like what you multiply by 8 to get this. That's right. That's a good point. I was just going to say that. I'm going to give you a point towards your free problem set. So, um, yeah, so multiples are what you multiply by 8. Or not what you multiply by 8, but when you multiply by 8, this is what you get. You get 16, 32, you get 64, you get 80. You get all those multiples, all right? So we're going to talk about multiples today. Now, um, if I asked you to find the greatest common factor of 8 and 6, what would it be? Kiara? 2. 2. That's the greatest number that goes into 8 and 6, Okay. Now, what about the least common multiple of eight and six? Anyone know that? Grace? Um, 24. 24, that's right. So you have to think about that a little bit longer. So that's what we're gonna talk about today, but would I ever ask you what the least common factor of eight and six is? What's the least common factor of any two numbers? One. Hunter? One. One. So it'll always be the same number, one. So I'll never ask you what the least common factor of two numbers is. What's the greatest common multiple of eight and six? Hunter. Infinite. Yeah, because that goes on forever, right? So eight and six, the least common multiple is 24. And then the next one would be every multiple of 24. So 48, 72, 96. 144 is in there somewhere okay so um does that make sense like you i'll never ask you what the least common least common factor is or the greatest common multiple good did we already talk about this kind of okay all right thank you for pretending like it's new information and not embarrassing me okay multiples so four and six you can do it this way if you want. If you can't think of that, anyone know what that is? The least common multiple of four and six is real quick. What is it, Grace? Two. That's the oh, greatest that's common one. factor. One. What's the least common multiple, not least common factor? Oh, oh. Okay, 12. Okay, 12. Oh, these guys are raising their hand very energy, eagerly, and you just spit it out. Okay, so you could just try to figure it out in your head, or you could just list the multiple. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Um, and usually what I'll do is I'll list the multiples of the bigger number first, and then I'll see if 4 goes into any of those. 6, no. 12, yep, stop. Okay, so once you get it, you can stop. You're done. Yeah, it's like 6, 12, Stop 18. Yeah, like a stop sign is not even a hexagon, it's an octagon. <gasps> what? Okay, so your common multiples, if I didn't stop, I would say 18, 24. So 24, these are common multiples. Remember, so multiples, we don't really care too much. You will be asked to find the next common multiple. 
Well, all you do is double your least common multiple. So the next common multiple is 24, but, and then you can just keep adding 12s. What's the next common multiple gonna be? Hunter? 36. 36, 48, 60, and so on, right? But, you, but you're going to be asked to find the least common multiple, which is the least of these is 12. Okay? So here's the weird thing. When I think of greatest common factor, I think of something big. When I think of least common multiple, I think of something small. But it's the opposite, isn't it? Greatest common factor are the small numbers. Those, those, those are the numbers that go inside of a number. But the multiples, those are the big ones. So when I say least common multiple, it's not something small, it's big. It's actually the smallest of the big numbers. Greatest common factor is the biggest of the little numbers. Okay? Doesn't that seem backwards? Okay. It seems odd. It seems odd, but that's a good way to remember it. All right, it's, it's kind of opposite of what it feels like. Okay. Ooh, look at that bird right there. Look at that bird. Oh, Everyone gets up brunch to the windows. Oh, there's a worm now. It's huge. It's gross in its mouth. Oh, it flew away. Okay. What is it? What is it? So um, we're like the dog and up. We're like, squirrel. Right? Oh, yeah, there's like a little voice box thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, let's try three numbers. Let's see if you can find the LCM of three, four, and six. Ready, go. Ooh, Kiara, you got an answer right away? What is it? That's right. Okay, um, so how did you get, do you have a strategy of how, what you did? Kind you just of, guess? Kind of yes and kind of no. Okay, um, what'd you do? I basically, like, because I already knew that 4 and 6 had 12. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and I thought, like, is 4 and multiple of 6, no, factor, well, whatever, um, does, like, is it, it does 4, does something multiply by 4 to get 6? <laughs> no, and then I kept going up until okay. I got, like, wow. 9 and then 12 and then I got. So 12. I kind of see what you did. So you know that it can't be any lower than 12 because the common multiple, least common multiple of four and six is 12. Well, the first question I would ask, well, I already know that that's 12. Does three go into 12? Yeah. Yes. So it's 12. That works. What if it was five, four, and six? Okay. Well, that doesn't work because five doesn't go into 12. So you have to keep going. You have to keep trying to think of, but you could take all the multiple common multiples of, of four and six, anyone know, know right away by looking at that list, what the least common multiple of five, four, and six is? <sighs> Hunter, I saw your name hand first. I'm pretty sure it's 60. Yep, 60. So five has to go into one of these numbers, right? Because the, these are the common multiples of four and six. So the only number that five goes into is 60. So the next one would be 120. And then the next one would be 180, okay? So, that works. Okay, now there's another cool way to do this. You can use um, factor trees. So I'm gonna do the least common multiple of 18 and 24. Does anyone know what that is right away? Yeah. It's a little bit harder to get to. You know what it is? Yeah. What? Three. Nope. So you're still thinking factor. You're still in factor mode. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. So you could start listing the, fa the multiples of 18 and 24, or there's another way. I'm going to do factor trees. Okay, let's do factor trees. What times what is 18? Three times six. Three times six. Three is prime, right? What times what equals six? Three times two. Three times two, and you're done, right? So what is this? Two times three times three, or two times three squared? I can write it like that, right? So far, so good? No. What about 24? Uh, 12 goes into 24. 12, 12 times two, so two's prime. You can break down 12 more. What, goes, what times what is 12? Six. Six, six and two, two's prime. Three and two. Three and two. Three. Okay, so how do I write that in the fancy way? 
times two times two times Yeah, what's two times two times two? How do you write that fancy two way? Two to the power of three. Two to the power of three times just one three. Okay, so these are my uh, prime factorizations of these two numbers. Okay, now, the least common multiple, you're kind of taking the champion of every factor. So in this town, uh, the three uh, is three squared. You're taking the biggest of each factor. That's three squared, that's two. So the least common multiple, where does two appear the most? So there's only one two here, but there's two to the third here. So that's what we include in our least common multiple, not two to the fourth. You don't add them together. This is just, this is the biggest factor of two is two to the third. What about the threes? Where does three appear the most? Three to the second. Yeah, so this, this is bigger than this, so we're gonna ignore that and write that. So what's two to the third times three squared? So that's eight, right? Eight. What's that? Six. Nine. No, three six. squared is nine, right? Three times itself. What does that equal? Seventy-two. Seventy-two. Is that what you were going to say when you had your hand up? Okay. So the other way to do this is just list them out. Okay, right? You got 18, 36, um, 54, 72, uh, 90, let's see where we get with 24, 24, 48, 72, boom. So you could have listed them out like that. That's that totally fine. So but um, if you do it this way, you could get lucky because these could be friendly numbers. 18 and 24 are very composite, very friendly. And so you would get that, you would find that common multiple sooner than later, right? But you're not always gonna have friendly numbers. You might have a situation where this is the better way to do it, okay? All right, um, let's see here. So there's two ways. Are you guys comfortable with at least one of these methods to find the least common multiple? Okay, question? Yep, all right. If 16 popsicles, Costs four bucks. How much does one popsicle cost? It's cents. What do you got? Twenty five cents. Twenty five cents. How'd you do that so fast? <laughs> four times four is sixteen. So you divide four by four. Four by sixteen. Four by four. Four times sixteen. Four hundred by four. Okay, four hundred times four divided by. Um, yeah, no, that yeah. Okay, so you just kind of figured it out, but here's the deal. Um, it's a division problem, right? So you want to know how much each popsicle costs. So if $4, you're basically going 400 divided by 16, or $4 divided by 16 cents. Is that how you write it? No. No. Why is this bad? They have to be in the same family. What's easier to say cents or dollars? Dollars. I would say cents. You know why? Because then you don't have to deal with decimals. Okay, 400 cents. So we could say 400 cents divided by 16, or you could keep it in dollars and say 0.16 dollars into four. So see how that makes it just a slight, slightly more complicated. It's not a big deal. You guys know how to divide decimals, right? Okay. So. How do we do this? How many times does 16 go into 40? Without going over. Well, we already know the answer, don't we? Yeah. It's 25 cents. So how many times does 16 go into 40? Two times. With eight left over, and that goes in five times, boom, so 25 cents. You could have done it this way. So in order to divide by decimals, you can add zero, you can put zeros on the end of any, any decimal number, right? So 16, go, now you can ignore the decimals by putting the decimal in the, in the answer and then just going from there. 16 goes into 42 times. Eight left over, bring down another zero. 
So 0.25, same answer, just in a different format, right? It's fancier. Okay, it looks fancy. It's fancier. All right, um, now you could just think about this logically, like if, if uh, not 16, what did what I do? 16, po 16 popsicles, what am I thinking? 25 cents, either way that works. Okay. Um, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Wait, can I correct you? There's not supposed to be no. decimals. Yeah, the decimals don't really. Don't Wait, really can I get a free phone? Wait, you still <laughs> eat? <laughs> we eat of our popsicles already? I'm smart though. Yeah, the point one six. You don't want point one six. So if you think about it this, guys, you could just, just, um, if 16 popsicles cost $4, then you could go, okay, what's, what's eight popsicles cost? Half of $4, two bucks, right? And then four popsicles would cost $1. So then when you get down to four popsicles cost $1, okay, it's a quarter a piece. Does that make sense? You know what we did in our heads? We just reduced the fraction. 16, 16 for four, well, let's just keep going down, right? Then it's eight for two. We keep reducing the fraction, four for one, but we want this to be one. So this becomes one, one divided by four is 25 cents, okay? So basically, this is a ratio. So 16 popsicles for uh, $4. So you just reduce it until you get down to one. All right. Um, yeah, we'll leave it at that. We'll talk more about ratios a little bit later, but um, let's move on to lesson 28. Black math. Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math.